tonight, the spirit of the rest of this evening is going to totally, totally change because I'm going to go in a total different direction. Psalms 124. Psalms chapter 124 and verse 1. Thank you for standing tonight. Thank God for this beautiful group of people here this evening in our Sabbath service. Psalms 124 and verse 1. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say. Somebody say now. now. See, you, he was basically saying now may Israel say. You can't always say it, but there comes a point in time when you can say it. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us, then they that had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters had overwhelmed us and the stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who hath not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Uh, The title of my message tonight is this. Divine Dates with Deity. Divine Dates with Deity. You can be seated. What do I mean when I say divine dates with deity? Can I tell you that every single one of us here tonight all need God moments? Absolutely, yes. Right? Yes, absolutely. And I could have simplified this by naming this message God moments, but I liked divine dates with deity better. It had a better ring to it. Divine dates with deity that means god moments you have a specific time where you have an appointment a date with god god moments the scripture starts off by saying if it had not been the lord who was on our side now may israel say i like that read that again with me psalms 124 and verse 1 If it had not been, if it had not been, notice that part that says it had not been is in parentheses. That means it wasn't in the original. They added it. So really, if it had not been the Lord, it was really saying if the Lord who was on our side. Now Israel may say, and then it goes on to say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side. Now, what I want you to notice in this verse is the Scripture back in verse 1 says something that we need to be careful not to overlook. It ends with saying, Now may Israel say. That's a moment. Now. Somebody say, now. Now may Israel say. I want you to know that there will be things that happen in your life, things you go through that you will have to survive, difficult seasons, that you will not be able to speak of the greatness of God in your life until it's over. And when you go through it, and the God who brought you to it will bring you through it, When He brings you through those most difficult times, you will have a God moment in which you are able to say, Now may Israel say. I'm here to tell somebody tonight that God is about to have a divine date with you. Tonight was a service that was set that you thought was just you meeting your service schedule. You thought this is just me getting in the car and going to a Friday night service. 
But I want you to know that this night, and I need somebody to hear this. I'm saying this prophetically in the Holy Ghost. This night is a night that you will be able to leave this service and say after tonight what you were not able to say before tonight. There are divine dates with deity. There are God moments that we have where we have a divine connection. We have a moment with God. We have a date with deity. We have a date with destiny where we meet God at a crossroads in our lives and all of a sudden it's like an epiphany a light bulb turns on we have a sudden realization we understand now what we didn't understand two months ago i understand now what i didn't know a year ago i have perspective now that i didn't have six years ago i have perspective now that i didn't have six months ago because now may Israel say, now may Israel say, I want to tell somebody that this service is going to be the service that you leave, that you have understanding you didn't have before tonight, and you're going to be able to have a testimony that you couldn't have had if you hadn't have been here and had a divine date with deity and had a God moment. Because when you leave here tonight, you're going to be able to have perspective, you're going to be able to testify, you're going to be able to proclaim boldly what you couldn't have proclaimed before, all because you you had a God moment all because you had a divine date with deity he made everything make sense it's like when you go through when you're going through it you don't get it you don't see the good gonna come out of it when you're in the midst of the storm you don't see the good that could possibly come out of this when you're going through the hell, when you're going through the hurt, when you're going through the rejection, when you're going through the job loss, when you're going through the health crisis, when you're going through the legal problem, you could never imagine what good could come from this. And you begin to even wonder, God, are you on my side? Where are you? Where are you at? Everything's going wrong. Everything that can go wrong can't does go wrong. And the only friends I have is friends like Job. And for Job's friends, if that's what friends are, who needs enemies, right? Amen. And so when you go through these moments, you wonder, how am I going to glean anything? How's my life ever going to be any better? What can I even learn from this? And you just don't understand that God is needle is threading the needle in just the right way. At the right moments, the right things are going to happen. The right things are going to be said that's preparing you for a future time in God when you're going to need fresh perspective and fresh insight. But if God wouldn't have let you went through it, then you would have never had a divine date with deity. You would have never had a God moment till after you come through it, after you survive it, and like this scripture, now may Israel say. I feel like somebody here tonight needs to hear this word. This is not just a canned sermon. This is a word for somebody from the throne of God tonight. That God has brought you to this place and this moment in time, going through the things you have went through and surviving the things that you have went through so that you can now say what you couldn't have said. If you don't go through a time of sickness, you'll never know Him as Jehovah Raphi, my healer. If you don't go through a time of lack, you'll never know Him as Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Come on, somebody. How are you ever going to know God as a healer if you never go through a time of sickness? How are you ever going to know God as a provider if you don't ever go through a financial crisis? I'm here to tell you that your setback is really a setup. I said your setback is only a setup. Does anybody hear what I'm saying right now? That when you get through this, when you come through the other side, now may Israel say what I couldn't say before. I've lived through it. I've been there, done that, and got the t-shirt. Psalms 124 and verse 2. 
if it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us. If you've never been in that moment and you've never gone through that, when people rise up against you and you feel like from every direction somebody is trying to devour you and tear you down. When men rose up against us, how many has ever had somebody rise up against you to try to hurt, hinder, or stop you in some area of your life. Amen. Then he says in verse 3, Then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters had overwhelmed us, and the stream had gone over our soul. How many of you have ever been in those moments in your life where you feel like you were being devoured like the scripture says in verse 3 then they had swallowed us up quick how many of you feel like that you've ever just been on the platter to be devoured by your enemies have you ever been feeling like that you were for lunch and your enemies were hungry have you ever felt like your opposers were hungry and you was what was fresh for dinner? Then they had swallowed us up quick. It's almost as if the writer is saying, I know what it's like to be quickly devoured and the enemy to consume you. When he says, swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. When I look at the next verse, it then says in verse 4, then the waters had overwhelmed us and the stream had gone over our soul. So not only am I for lunch and I'm about to be swallowed, but now I'm in a place in life where I feel like I'm about to drown. Look what he said. The waters had overwhelmed us. What was he? Anybody ever been in a place in life where you feel like on life's boundless ocean where mighty billows roll? I've put my trust in Jesus, blessed anchor of my soul, when trials of fears assail me. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me tonight? There are times that not only do you feel like you're about to be devoured, but there's those moments that waters had overwhelmed us when it feels like you're about to sink, when it feels like you're about to go under. Anybody know what I'm talking about tonight? When you are just trying to keep your head above water. You're just trying to keep your head above water. You're just trying to keep from sinking. You're just trying to keep from going under. You're in the boat and you're in bailing water mode. Just trying to keep the water out of the boat. Trying to keep from going under. Those moments when you felt like you was about to sink and go under. If it had not been for the Lord. Oh, then he goes on to say, verse 6. I like this. I like this. Oh, you, you, you're about to get what I'm about to see, what I see here right now. Here the writer's talking about how he just about was devoured by his enemy. He was about to be swallowed. He was, he was about to be lunch and be swallowed. And he was about to sink and go under, drowning in his troubles. And out of nowhere, Sister Baker, out of nowhere, he interrupts the analogies and the metaphors with a praise break. I was being swallowed up and the waters were going over me and I was about to drown, I was about to sink, I was about to go under, but I'll stop for a minute. Bless the Lord who hath given us as prey to their teeth I'm wondering tonight if you can find an ounce of praise. Oh my. Yes. 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 
Just ask Paul and Silas with their backs laid open in a prison cell. <laughs> and they sang and praised God in the midnight hour. And when they came through that experience, they could say what they couldn't say before. If it had not been for the Lord, now I can say, now I can say, is there, who, who here going, who here tonight is going through something? Who here? I, I want you to be real. Come on. Sometimes we need to be real and open. Who's here going through a, a, a trial here tonight that at least on a scale of one to ten is a six? Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up right now. Please. Come on. If you're at least going through a six right now. I've got some fresh insight for you. In the midst, because by the way, the chapter's not over yet. We're only to verse 6. He says, I'm still yet pray for their teeth. He's not done devouring me yet. But while I'm talking about drowning, and while I'm talking about being swallowed by my enemy, I think I'll just stop to worship for a minute and take a praise break. Because when you praise God in the prison cell at midnight, that's when jail cells are opened. Are you hearing me right now? I'm wondering if somebody could take a praise break in the middle of your calamity. Can you praise God even in the midst of being swallowed? Can you praise God even in the midst of when the waters are coming over you and you're about to drown? Can you praise Him then? You got to learn to praise Him even when everything's going wrong. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. That, I was hoping for a little bit better than that. I was needing a bit. The Lord was needing a better response. I'm not needing you to get behind this preaching. I'm not trying to get you to get behind my sermon. I'm trying to get you to get the story. Blessed be the Lord. There's so much power in a praise break. There's so much power when you stop in the midst of your difficulty and decide, devil, you may have taken my strength, my health, my job, my money. You may have taken my children. You may have taken everything around me. But there's one thing you haven't taken from me because you can't take this from me, devil. I have to give it to you. And you can't get it. And that's my praise. devil can't take your praise. You can only give it to him. Why are you waiting for everything to get fixed before you praise God? You need to praise him on credit like it's going to be fixed. Like it's going to get better. Oh. If it had not been for the Lord, Oh, that's it, that's it, that's it. Maybe you would just start praising right now and God would just step in and fix it for you. Come on, there's power in your praise and worship. There's power even in a prison cell. Praise and worship is always fitting. 
Don't wait to praise God in the cathedral. Praise God in your dark dungeon prison cell like Paul and Silas. Watch how powerful your praise is when you learn to praise God in your dark dungeon moments. Woo! Uh. I got some folks here tonight that know the power in praise and worship. Even while you're being devoured and swallowed, even when you're about to sink and go under, there's some folks here know tonight that God inhabits the praise of his people. And when you begin to praise him in the midst of your turmoil, God shows up. Yes. Yes. You got to get it. <laughs> Some of you still haven't got it. What are you waiting for? To praise God. <laughs> yes. Now listen. Ha. Now listen, I'm about done. Listen. <laughs> Blessed be the Lord who hath not given us as prey to their teeth. What's he saying? I've been swallowed. I've been swallowed whole. And I just about drowned. But look what he said. Blessed be the Lord who hath not given us as prey to their teeth. What does that mean? Well, I've been swallowed and I just about drowned, but at least they didn't gnaw me with their teeth. In other words, you ready for this? It could be worse than it is. And the reason why he said bless the Lord is even though he'd been swallowed and even though the waters had overtaken him, at least he wasn't being gnawed with the teeth. It can always be worse than what it is. Nobody believes that when they're going through it. We think it, no, it could never be any worse than this. The next verse, listen carefully. Look what he says. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Listen to his testimony just in the first six, seven verses. I was about swallowed. I about drowned. Praise God, I didn't get gnawed with their teeth. But now after six verses of trial, I'm now to verse 7, which is the number of perfection. And when I am perfected in the midst of my trouble, I'll be released out of my prison like a bird out of its cage. Verse 7, hold on, verse 7's coming. I know the water's deep. I know you feel like you're about to drown. I know you feel like you're launched for your enemy and he's about to swallow you. But hold on, because when you get to verse 7, there's some deliverance coming. I said there's some deliverance coming. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. I think I now know where the song came from. Once like a bird in prison I dwelt. No freedom from my sorrow I felt. Then Jesus came and listened to me. Glory to God, 
he set me free oh he set me free oh he set me free he broke the bonds of prison for me well i'm glory bound my jesus to see glory to god he set me free all right we're about there Our help is in the name of the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. Come on, raise your hands all across this house right now. Raise your hands, just you and Jesus right now. Divine dates with destiny. Divine dates with destiny. Listen to this. After you have a divine date with destiny, after you have a God moment. Somebody say God moment. Something happens to you. I said something happens to you. Not for you. Something happens to you, not for you. It's a divine encounter. It's a divine date with destiny. It's a divine date with deity. It's a God moment. It's a fear not, Mary. For that which is conceived in you is of the Holy Ghost. And all because of a God moment. And a divine date with deity this little virgin girl had. And she had a God moment with this angel. And this angel told her this news. Because of that God moment, we sit here tonight delivered. I'm talking about the power of God moments. <laughs> I'm talking about a God moment. I'm talking about a divine date with deity. It's a Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me kind of moment. It's a Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me kind of date with deity. When a man called Saul, who had letters in his hand to Damascus to kill the Christians, because of a God moment on the road to Damascus, because of divine date with deity, that day he no longer had letters in his hand to kill Christians, but he spent the rest of his life giving us two-thirds of the New Testament. And they were letters not to kill Christians, but were letters written to Christians. They're called the epistles. Romans through Jude. All because of a God moment. <laughs> All because somebody had a divine date with deity. A dream, a vision, a speaking with tongues beyond control moment. In Acts chapter 10, Peter on the housetop in a trance moment. When in a moment, in a God moment, in a divine date with deity, Peter had a God moment with God and because of that, the gospel went to the Gentiles. Yes, All because of a God moment. Right. All because of a divine date with deity. A Cornelius and an angel moment. An Acts chapter 10 verse 44 moment. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them which believed. Are you hearing me? There is a moment for hunger. A God moment. A healing moment. A delivering moment. Come on. It's about time moment. If it had not been for the Lord, I'm here to tell somebody your moment's about here. Your God moment. Your divine date with deity. When you can say what he said in Psalms 124 and verse 1. Now may Israel say I can't say now what I couldn't say back before then I can now say it I can now say it I can now say it somebody needs to have a God moment in this service a moment of healing a moment of change a moment of deliverance where you lay it all down a moment of healing Hallelujah. 
a moment of change. Hallelujah. I debated on whether I'd tell you tonight or Sunday morning. But I know what it's like to have a God moment. In 2012, I began to have a great interest and begin to study out the ministry of a man named William Branham. Has anybody ever heard of William Branham? William Branham was a very gifted man who preached in his heyday in the late 1940s and all of the 1950s and the first half of the 1960s. He died December 24th, 1965 from a car crash when he was hit head on by a drunk driver in Amarillo, Texas. William Branham was a oneness Pentecostal who was known in his later years for some controversial teachings, and they certainly are. Uh, and so many people overlook the good by seeing the controversial. But Oral Roberts, A.A. A. Allen, F.F. F. Bosworth, Kenneth Hagin, all of those men all spoke and said of him that there was not a more miraculous ministry since the days of the apostles of Jesus Christ. Brother Branham had an incredible ministry where he preached. He went around the world seven times and he would stand in front of people. And when he would stand in front of people, people that he never knew, he would have an angel that would come to him and begin to give him visions and he would stand in front of him as visions came before his eyes and he would tell the people each one of them, I mean, he didn't pick people out of the crowd. These were people in front of 50,000 people. They would line up and one by one, he would tell them what their sickness was. He would tell them what their problems was. He, was tell, he would tell them where they were from. He would tell them their name. These were the days before they had earpieces, you know, uh, for people to hear in the ear. And he would tell them their sickness. He would tell them where they were from. He would tell them their name. He would tell them their address. It was remarkable. And he told them these words of knowledge to elevate their faith to the point to where they could believe enough to be healed. Well, the interesting thing about Brother Branham's ministry was uh, as he would begin to preach and he would, after he would be done preaching, he would wait for this angel to come to him. And he had such a gifted ministry that it was beyond just the gifts of the Spirit. He actually, just like many of the prophets in the Bible days, had angels come to them and assist them. Daniel the prophet had an angel that came to him uh, that was delayed 21 days by the prince of Persia. <clears throat> and so Jacob wrestled with an angel all night. Abraham was told at his tent door that his wife uh, would conceive in her old age. And all this was told by an angel. Angels are extensions of God. And... Uh, Regardless of whether Brother Branham went off the wrong, in the wrong direction and went down the beaten path, I'm not his judge and neither are you. But there's one thing that can be said without a doubt. Multiple testimonies, millions, and I don't say that lightly, I say millions of people's lives were affected by his ministry. The latter rain movement was said to have sprung from his gifting. And so probably back around 2012, I think it was 2012, I had just really developed a strong interest so much that I met personally his, some of his family. The guy's been dead almost 50 years now. But I met some of his family. I met the pastor of his church that's still in Jeffersonville, Indiana. And, and about that time, it was the strangest thing when the interest came. I had developed, as you have all seen, if you've ever followed me someplace to minister, I have a similar gift, not to the measure that he has, but a similar measure where God will give me the ability to speak a word of knowledge, and we've seen miracles. In fact, we've had three persons deaf in this church this year that were healed. Um, three people this year. 
I never really understood it. I never, in fact, I even laid it down for a while because it didn't make sense to me. His doctrines and his belief systems were so troubling to many that they either became so immersed in it to the point of cult-like, or the people abandoned it and left it just because they couldn't wrap their mind around it. And you can ask my wife the many conversations that we had that I was puzzled by this man's ministry. I could not escape it. I, it would not leave me. It would not. We talked about this many, many times. And then the interesting thing is I had, uh, in this, since I started pastoring in this area, met people who, to this day, people still meet uh, in churches. Uh, there's upwards, they say, of two million people in the world that still follow his message. It's a variation of the Pentecostal teaching. Uh, and they just meet in churches and sing, and then they listen to his tapes and listen to him preach. Um, the interesting thing, and now here's the, here's, and I'm talking about God moments tonight. Now, if this is not true, I'll take it to the judgment with me. And God, I'll stand before God if I'm lying to you. But I'll put my hand on the Bible that everything I am telling you this moment is the absolute truth. A week ago this past Wednesday night, I went home after the Wednesday night service and I drove separate from my wife, so I drove home, went into my house, went into the bedroom to change, and when I did, I knelt down to pray. I had a conversation and uh, my wife took the kids out to get a bite to eat or stop at the store. But while I was there, as God is my witness, as I stand before you, I had an encounter with an angel in my bedroom. An angel spoke to me. And an angel said these words to me. The reason why you have had such an interest in the ministry of William Branham is because the same angel that assisted and worked with him in his ministry stands before you. And he said to me, his life's work was taken short and the devil destroyed his life. But his work was not finished. And the angel said with, to me, you will walk in a measure of his anointing and you will take the healing prophetic. I just saw it right there. Just go right up right there. He said, you will carry that gift and you'll even take it on television and you will speak before millions of people and millions of people will hear of my power and there will be multitudes of healings that come from the ministry that God has given you. That was the end of it. Now I have not shared that with just but a few people and my wife and God as my witness on my son's life. That's how real I'm being. That's what was said. Talk about a God moment. And here's what I'm wanting to tell you. God is not a respecter of persons. We're either Pentecostal or we're not. We're either Book of Acts or we're not. We've got to be more than just a name on the sign. We need to be a book of Acts. We need to have a chapter 10, a chapter 2, a chapter 12. We need to have interactions with angels. Those days are not over. I said the last stories of those days are not over. And I want somebody in this house to hear me tonight. What I feel so impressed to tell you in the Holy Spirit is, is that God Himself wants you to know that there is a divine date with 
deity that God has for you here tonight and all of the trouble and the struggle you're going through right now will pale in comparison to what you'll be able to say once you come through your struggle and once you come through your trial. When you come through it, you'll understand. Now I can say, now I can say, now may Israel say, now I can understand the interest. Now I can understand why this prophetic ministry has developed in my life over the last few years. Now I can begin to put the pieces together all because of one divine date with deity. And I'm here to tell you, you'll never have complete closure. You'll never have complete clarity in your life until you understand that you'll never reach your full potential until you have a Damascus Road experience. A God moment. A God moment. A God moment. I don't want to be misunderstood. I am not at all saying this is going to become a Branham church. I didn't say Branham. I said His angel. Angels don't die when people do. And you say, well, there's no such thing as a healing angel. Well, my Bible tells me at a certain time in the season of the year, an angel came down and troubled the pool. Whoever got in it was the first one to be healed. You don't think angels have a hand in healing? Angels have a hand in everything that you need God to answer prayer for. And you can think I'm crazy all you want, but the fact of the matter is I stand before you tonight. I stand before you with a man as a, a man who has had a God moment, a divine date with deity, and I can never be the same because I know my life's purpose. I know my life's goal. I know my life's calling. And when you have a God moment, so will you too. Stand to your feet all across this place. See, we read about it in the Bible, about angels. We say, hallelujah, praise God, amen. We read about angels. We read about divine happening, supernatural and canon. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. We shout. Then somebody stands up and says, I have one. Yeah. Your problem is, is your, your problem is doubt. Your problem is unbelief. Yes. Amen. Amen. Sorry, I hate interrupting, but the moment he told us to stand to read the Bible, the Lord told me he was going to give me a confirmation of this message, which I thought, okay, interesting. But then I opened to the page. I'm going to leave this up here so you all can come see it yourself. It's covered in gold sparkles. I have no idea why I don't own a piece of clothing that has gold glitter on it, but this page is covered in gold sparkles. You see it? Got to move it around yes. in the light. And also, the first verse from the this chapter is highlighted. I swear I've never heard this preached before. I don't remember doing that. You see, now right, is even, now, now so. is circled with a square. I don't do that. I don't, I don't do that. I don't know. But there's another one because as I was sitting there, I was noticing something interesting about this now moment. He spoke about verse 7 when everything turned around. I don't know if, how many people know this, but you know the Hebrew language is read backwards, it's not read like we read from right to left, it's read from left to right. Well, I don't know if anybody else noticed that one of these things right here is not like the other. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is almost gone. This is a God moment right now. I want you to believe because people are going to begin to see manifestations in this room right now to confirm what I've said. I want you to begin to pray right now. Church, begin to pray. Ask the Lord to open your eyes and unstop your ears. Just like Gehazi, when, when Elijah took his hand off of his eyes, he saw the mountain full of angels. Don't doubt, only believe. All things are possible if you only believe. You've got to believe it. You've got to believe it. You've got to believe it. Come on, let's pray right now. There's a God moment, a divine date with deity. A divine date with deity. A divine date with deity. 
Folks get all nervous when people start talking about they had angelic encounters. Folks get all nervous when people start talking about that kind of business because it, it changes it from just being a Bible story to being a reality. A modern reality. Come on, let's begin to pray right now for a God moment. 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 Start believing for amazing things to happen. Hallelujah. 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 This is all about you and God right now. All about you and God right now. Don't worry about what people think. People think I'm crazy. That's all right. I'll answer to God for what I've said. You need to worry about having your God moment. Have your God moment right now. Don't put a limit on what you can experience with God. Don't put a limit on what God can do with you in a meeting. Don't put a limit. Don't put a limit. Don't put a limit on what you can see, what you can feel, what you can experience. Only when you doubt do you exempt yourself. Only when you doubt will you exempt yourself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, begin to seek His face. There is a holy hush come over this crowd. Mm. I preach this message because I wanted to tell you about my God moment. Hallelujah. 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 In the television thing, the angel said, I already knew about that because the Impact Network, I'm going to be on the Miracles Do Happen broadcast on the 1st of December. So I, I, I didn't doubt that whatsoever. In front of 70 million people, people are going to hear about our church. They're going to hear about God's power. They're going to hear about the gift of God. Hallelujah. 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 It's amazing how that people can believe in God when they don't see anything, but when somebody actually tells them, that I felt a spirit of doubt come into the room trying to steal your blessing. Don't let it steal your blessing. Don't let it steal your blessing. Don't let it steal your blessing. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, God, have your way.
We doubt. We doubt. Don't doubt there's things happening in this house right now. You cannot doubt it. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. 
See, some folks can't handle this kind of stuff. There are manifestations in this place to confirm God's word. There is oil. I want you to come up here and, and look at this, Sister Baker. I want you to verify it. But there is oil that is coming out of my hand. You seen that before? This is not some cracker box. Anybody ever heard the miracle when the oil multiplied? Smell that. And you could only get a miracle if you wouldn't doubt. Mm. You know, unbelief is the only real sin. You say, what about immorality? What about drugs? That's just symptoms of unbelief. If you get people to believe enough, the symptoms go away. It's like the flu. You go to the flu, you don't get a pill for the headache. You don't get a pill for the sore throat. You don't get a pill for the, the, the chills. If you address the flu, the symptoms go away. It's just like unbelief. If you get rid of unbelief and you replace it with faith, the drinking and the immorality will go. All of your problems that are in your life would go if you would let God replace your unbelief with faith right now. Come on, begin to worship in this house. Begin to worship in this house. Shanda Moranda Bakata Rabaha Rada Bayada Moranda Baha. Come on, believe for big things to happen. Thank you. 
The oil multiplies itself. It continues to multiply. Now that was done in the Bible. Why can't you believe it today? Why can't you believe it today? <laughs> we read the book of Acts. It says he'll confirm his word with signs and wonders. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Let's raise our hands one more time, one more time, one more time, one more time. Give God praise. Give God praise. He multiplied loaves, loaves and fish. He multiplied oil and fill, kept the vessels kept filling and they kept filling all because the widow gave the one cruise of oil. I told you there'd be manifestations and you think this was something, wait till Sunday morning. He turned water into wine. 
But the problem is people don't think he does that stuff anymore. He doesn't do stuff to woo and awe people anymore. Yes, he does. He didn't turn water into wine to help a need. He just did it for the fun of it. Who needs wine? Raise our hands one more time and thank him. Come on, thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him. He is here, he is here, he is here.